Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is a teeny hour circular. But before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit our website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and alternatively you can uh, uh, click the link in the description uh, and it will take you to the website. Now I come to the topic which is teeny hour circular. You know, uh, the fungus, which is known as uh, Melsesia, uh, is a type of yeast found on the surface of the skin, you know. And uh, uh, generally, it does not cause any health problems, you know, but in fact, uh, uh, many of the microbiota, like microscopic organisms, including yeast can like uh, this one which is living on the uh, live in large communities on your skin you know and uh, they help to protect you from infections and other pathogens that can cause harm or the disease you know and uh, they live uh, alongside your body's cells in the like uh, symbiotic relationships with with the skin cells and the tiny organisms sporting and uh, benefiting each other you know and sometimes uh, this yeast can grow out of control and uh, affect on like the natural color or the pigmentation of your skin you know and when this happens uh, you may develop the patches of the skin that are lighter or darker than the surrounding skin you know and uh, the condition which is not contagious is known as a tinea versicolor. You know. And uh, are the petriaces versicolor. And uh, there are many types of petriaces, you know, like petriaces rosio, etc. You know, but this is uh, the petriaces which is caused by the fungus, you know, the yeast, you know. And uh, you know it causes infection and uh, can suppress your uh, immune system as well. You know. Now the next thing is uh, uh, like uh, what are the causes of uh, tinea versicolor? You know, you know the tinea versicolor occurs when uh, the malaria grows rapidly on the surface of the skin, and the doctors are not sure. Um, why this happens and uh, some factors may play an important role in the overgrowth of the yeast on the skin you know like uh, and they may include like uh, oily skin you know um, hot and humid weather uh, sweating excessive sweating in fact you know and a weakened immune system like HIV AIDS etc you know or uh, uh, the organ transplant you know and uh, hormonal changes so these are the common risk factors you know and uh, this can occur in the people from all ethnic backgrounds and uh, it's more common in the like uh, adolescents and the young adults and teenagers you know and uh, adults are more likely to develop uh, it uh, if they visit on the area with the like subtropical climate you know uh, <clears throat> There was uh, the risk factors, you know. The next thing is what are the causes. Uh, sorry, what are the symptoms? You know? Well, the symptoms are like discolored patches of the skin. And uh, this is the most noticeable symptom, you know. And uh, these patches usually show up on the arm, chest, neck and back and the patches may be lighter, may be darker, may be pink, red, tan or brown, you know, and uh, like uh, they become more, uh, they are dry and itchy and scaly as well, you know, and uh, uh, they become more prominent with the tanning, you know, and uh, the prone to disappear in cooler, less uh, humid weather, you know. And uh, the tiny virus uh, uh, that develops in the People with a dark skin may result in the loss of skin color, uh, known as uh, 
hypopigmentation you know and uh, for some people the skin may darken instead of lighten and this condition is known as hyperpigmentation so it can affect two ways as a hyperpigmentation uh, in case where the skin color is brown or dark you know and uh, hyperpigmentation where and uh, like in Caucasians etc you know the white people you know and uh, some individuals who uh, develop the teeny color don't have any significant changes in their skin color or the appearance you know and uh, uh, like uh, you know in addition to the changes to the color of the skin uh, it may also experience the itchy skin you know and uh, the differential diagnosis is very important because there are so many other things that can be mixed up with them this uh, symptoms they have the same symptoms like uh, amitiligo you know there's something else you know and uh, uh, it looks can differ from the tinea versicular in several noticeable ways like uh, Vertigo does not affect your skin's texture, you know. And vitiligo usually appears on the fingers, wrists, uh, armpits, mouth, eyes, and groin, you know. And vitiligo often forms the patches that uh, are like of symmetrical. And uh, the rash caused by the pityriasis rosea is also similar to the tinea versicular, but this rash is usually like preceded by the herald patch, you know, which is. Uh, uh, a lone red patch of uh, scaly skin that appears a few days or weeks before the rash you know. and uh, uh, this rash typically appears uh, in the shape of the Christmas tree uh, on the back you know and it's not known what causes this condition you know but uh, like tinea versicular uh, it's neither harmful and uh, uh, it's not contagious to you know now the next thing is uh, like uh, what are the risk factors for a tinea versicolor so as I said there is the weakened immune system uh, excessive sweating humid and warm climate subtropical areas and uh, some types of cancer you know uh, so these are the risk factors you know and uh, you know if you're looking for the doctors uh, with the most experience treating that tinea versicular use the like uh, you can contact your gp for the referral you know to a good dermatologist and uh, uh, the next thing is uh, how do the doctors diagnose well your doctor will ask you the questions about uh, the history of this condition or uh, I mean and then he will perform the physical examination he will look onto uh, those patches you know are they hyperpigmented or hyperpigmented or are they scaly are they itchy or how do they appear etc you know and uh, uh, also check the status of the skin like it's dry or it's moist etc you know and ask you the questions about your recent travels to any humid or hot areas any history of uh, any kind of uh, uh, where your community uh, like immunity is compromised you know or any HIV or AIDS etc you know and uh, uh, this way your doctor will be able to diagnose um, but he may uh, order the biopsy which is of the skin scraping you know uh, and to see under the microscope uh, if there is any kind of abnormality in the cells you know uh, and uh, your doctor might also take uh, like uh, a sample of fungus on the skin and it can also be tested for the fungal culture you know to see if you have this condition and uh, your doctor may also use like a wood's lamp uh, to look at your skin and this is a special machine which uses ultraviolet light uh, in, uh, which is uh, 
held four to five inches from your skin and uh, if the yeast is present you know and uh, the affected skin will appear yellow or uh, green under the light you know so this is a very useful test in fact you know and uh, once diagnosed then what are the treatment options is another uh, most frequently asked question you know but if your systems are not severe you may choose to treat your condition at home and uh, over the counter antifungal medications or creams or shampoos may be effective you know for killing this uh, inf infection you know and uh, the examples of the over-the-counter medications uh, mm, that can be used to treat this uh, tinea versicolor uh, include like uh, uh, clotrimazole, you know, uh, miconazole or uh, uh, selenium sulfide shampoo, you know, or uh, selsen blue shampoo, you know, and uh, like uh, lemicel. So these are the over-the-counter medications which can be used and if uh, you seek medical attention for the tinea vascular, your doctor may prescribe the different medications such as the topical creams that can be applied directly to the skin like uh, uh, Loprox or uh, Penlac, you know, or uh, like uh, Extina or uh, Nizrol, you know. So these are the different creams which are prescribed, which can be prescribed to you. And your doctor may also prescribe the pills to treat the tinea vascular, including like uh, uh, Diflucan or uh, Omnel or uh, Spornox, you know, or uh, uh, Ketoconazole, you know. So these are the different medications which can be used. Uh, if you are diagnosed with the tinea vascular, the treatment will improve your long term outlook, you know. And uh, like, uh, but even after eliminating the infection, your skin may remain discolored for several weeks to months, you know. And uh, uh, your infection may also return when the weather becomes warmer and more like humid and if your condition returns uh, the doctor may prescribe medications once or twice per month to prevent the symptoms you know thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition yeah one thing i was uh, going to forget is that uh, is it possible to prevent this you know well uh, it can be difficult to prevent the recurrence of this condition you know and if you are have been diagnosed with that in your school and uh, you have successfully treated it and uh, there are the steps that you can take uh, to prevent future infections like uh, avoid the excessive heat you know or uh, avoiding the like tanning or the excessive sun exposure or avoiding the excessive sweating you know so this way yes you can uh, take these steps to just to minimize the chance of recurrence you know thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease and any medical condition, you can visit our website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Goodbye.